Chris Nassetta is president and CEO of Hilton Worldwide. He has a long and accomplished career in the global hospitality business and has been with Hilton since 2007. He's also former chairman of the World Travel and Tourism Council. Nasetta manages almost 7,000 properties with over 1 million guest rooms spread across a multitude of brands in 122 countries. He's leading the hotel giant amid a sharp rebound in travel and tourism after the COVID pandemic. And welcome back to Yahoo Finance's All Market Summit presented by Northern Trust. I'm here with Hilton Worldwide CEO Chris Nasetta and Brad Smith. Chris, welcome back to the All Market Summit. So let's let's get right into it here. If the 2020 to 2021 period in the lodging industry was a depression, what would you coin what we're seeing right now? You know, uh, first of all, thanks, Brad and Brian, for having me on. Great to be back. I think I was on a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, it, what's interesting in our industry, you're right, 20 and 21 were terrible. I mean, in the beginning of the, of the pandemic, we were down 90% in revenues and then sort of clawed our way back through the latter part of uh, 2020 and into 2021. But as we had different variants between Delta and Omicron and other things going on, we sort of, you know, we're going back and back and forth. But you know, as, as we started to get stability, you know, coming through uh, the Omicron variant in the spring and, and throughout uh, and into the fall, we've seen very, very steady recovery. So I would say um, we're at the beginning of what I think is going to be a new golden age of travel. I mean, what, what happened is a lot of people thought, um, in fact, you guys were asking me two years ago, is anybody going to want to travel again? And, it, and, it, and I said at that time, of course, people need to travel for all sorts of reasons. They want to travel because they want to see people in places. They need to travel for, you know, for business purposes. They need to travel to congregate as part of meetings and events for all sorts of reasons, whether it's, you know, culture building, um, whether it's sales conferences, what, whatever, whatever it might be. And they're doing it. And so we've seen a very uh, strong recovery in all segments of the business led by the leisure business, but very strong recovery in business travel, very strong recovery in meetings and events. And uh, it continued throughout the summer um, and, and it is continuing into the fall. So I'd say, you know, we're in the, in the midst of a very strong rebound coming out of, a, your words, not mine, a depression for um, hospitality business in, in 20 and 21. Chris, take us further into that demand rebound that you're seeing right now, and especially as it relates to the corporate travel. This is a cohort of consumers that really accounts for so much of the profit margins for leisure and hospitality businesses. So when you're re-engaging with them, you know, what have you been able to track to say in your forecasts going even into next year that this is going to continue to return, especially as they're looking across some of their own travel and expense policies? And that's tightening a little bit right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, clearly that that is and I, we expect it to, to continue. Having said that, there's a huge amount of uh, pent up demand, Brad, that's that that is being released for all sorts of business travel. When you back up and look at the core of our business travel population, even pre COVID, it was it was 80 percent small and medium sized businesses. That's probably about 85, maybe maybe even a little bit higher today. And what we found during COVID and certainly in recovery is that, that they're, they're a lot more resilient. Um, and, the, and the reason is that they, they're running their businesses. They have to get out and travel. They have to meet their partners. Their salespeople have to get out. They have to go to their other offices. And so they don't have as much of the luxury of saying that they're not going to travel. And so what we've seen is the big corporate um, business transient has been, is recovered nicely and is recovering in a very strong way now, but is still not back to historic levels where small and medium businesses are above 2019 historical high water marks. And I think it has a lot to do, as I said, with just people going for an extended period of time without doing the, the basic things that they needed to do to run their business. And I think it was a really neat idea to think that you could do everything virtually and everything on Zoom and you could do all your culture building and all your innovation and all your sales and all the partner and relationship work in, in a very efficient format. But the, but the real truth is you can't. 
Um, and I think that was proven. And I, so I think what we're seeing is sort of the other side of that, where people certainly are going to use technology. I'm not uh, going to be silly about it in different ways. And the technology as it advances will take certain trip occasions uh, and change them. But they're just being replaced with higher value trip occasions because people realize they have to be out um, and, and meeting one-on-one um, -on -one or in groups with people. And so I feel, you know, very good about where things are going. I mean, you, you know, clearly the macro environment is, is more challenging. There's no question that here in the U.S. and in, in much of the world with inflation um, uh, where it is that central banks, including the Fed here at home, are going to do what they have to do to slow demand in order to, you know, get inflation under control. I think that's a given. I think, you know, it'd be crazy to say um, that that's not happening and mm -hmm. going to continue to happen. But, but what's happening in our business is, as you said, we, we were not a beneficiary of COVID. We, we got beaten, beaten up quite badly. And we're seeing sort of the unwinding of a lot of that that gives us quite a bit of wind in our sails, I think, for, for a, you know, a reasonably extended period of time. What, what are those things that are being released? Well, people are changing their spending patterns, right? They are spending, during COVID, they spent all their time online buying things, okay, whatever that was, cars, washers, dryers, you know, microwaves, things, phones, you know, technology. Now they're shifting their, their spending patterns back to what they had been doing pre-COVID, which has been a multi-decade trend towards spending on experiences. Well, we're experiences. So we have this big secular shift back to uh, experiences. Um, the other thing we have going on is international travel. The world is, is almost all of the world is open up. There are parts that are still not, probably China being the most notable, certain parts of Asia, although Japan is opening up. And as that occurs, you're starting to get all of that international travel that occurred prior to 2019 sort of back and, and going. We have a long way to go to get back where we, where we were, but, but it is starting to happen. And then, as I already mentioned, just pent up demand. Mm -hmm. uh, just people had, had two and a half years of not doing things they needed to do, whether that was for leisure or business or meetings and events, and that is being released. So in the face of some macro headwinds, we have some pretty nice tailwinds that are propelling you know, our recovery uh, forward still. And you can look at the industry data we haven't reported, so I'm not gonna talk about our data, but you can look at all the industry data up to, through last week and you're not seeing signs in any of the segments of our business um, that suggest that the consumer um, is, that things are weakening. They continue to sort of power uh, up and continue to recover in, in a positive way. Well, Chris, uh, you know, just some food for thought. Uh, I stayed at a Hilton recently and I did a Zoom call. So just to give you a little insight into how uh, I am the new face. I of, love that. I am the new face of business travel. Hey, but, Brian. Yeah. But here's the, th here's the thing. Um, mobility is, you're, 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 you're making my case to a degree that I've, I've, we didn't talk about today, but I've <laughs> talked about many times. The world is getting more mobile. Mm -hmm. Technology is enabling that. You had a lot of other things that enabled it, low cost airlines and other things over the last 20 or 30 years. But technology is connecting the world, speeding the world up and making, peop and, and making people more mobile. And, and the reality is COVID accelerated that process where the office environment is changing, how you work, how I work, how everybody works is changing mm -hmm. in a way that I think people are gonna be on the road more. People being on the road more and being more mobile is very good for our business. Chris, uh, my back of the envelope math right now has you being the CEO of a public company for 22 years. Of course, first with Host, now with Hilton. You've seen some economic cycles. Does, does it feel like what the Federal Reserve is doing is going to slow the economy down markedly? Does this feel like we're headed into recessions of recessions past? Well, it's really hard to know, and I'm not an economist, so I'll, I'll leave that to others you're going to have on that are smarter than I am on those matters. I do believe that what the Fed is doing is going to slow um, the economy down. I mean, they've stated it. That is their intention. Um, that is what they need to do, and so I think that they will do it. Uh, I am certainly hopeful that as a result of the actions that they're taking, along with some of the natural things that are, that are going on that, that have pushed inflation so high, sort of working their way through the system, 
some of the supply chain issues around the world as those loosen up, some of the labor issues around the world, particularly in the West, as, as some of those free up, some of the commodities issues that have been so uh, difficult, which already have started to sort of ease, not, not just oil, but other, other commodities. I think as you, the combination of sort of the natural pro, you know, process of those things sort of working their way, th way through the system, along with what the Fed is doing, um, will slow the economy, will help bring inflation down, and, and the hope is allows the Fed at some point over the next six or 12 months to sort of stabilize, having done their job with inflation more under control, and allow mm. the economy to get its footing again and start uh, a process of reacceleration. That is my hope. I, you know, what are the odds? Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, my own view is that there's a reasonably good chance that we will get a, you know, reasonable landing, you so, know, which is sort of soft to bumpy-ish landing with the economy. And as I said, it'll be what it'll be in the, in the case of our business and industry. I think that the tailwinds that we have, you know, we're, are going to take us for a while just because there's some natural structural things I already described that are happening that are, that are wind in our sails that are going to, you know, get us through a decent period of time. Depends how long and how deep any slowdown is to know what the impact will be. And obviously macro impact is going to have impact on us ultimately. But, you know, our business is in fabulous shape. Our balance sheet's in incredible shape. Our margins are higher than they've ever been. Right. One in five rooms under, under construction in the world have Hilton brands on them. We're opening more than a hotel a day. Let's talk about um, that construction. We're performing, we're yeah. performing at the highest levels broadly. You know, if you look through Q2, uh, from a margin and profitability point of view that we ever have. Chris, let's talk about that room development, because as I look across the number of rooms that you have in development, at least as of the end of the most recent quarter, it's in surplus of 400,000 rooms that are in development right now. And so it as is. you think through the development pipeline and when those come online, how long does it typically take for the property to be accretive to the business and has some of the more short-term homestays that the trends in the market are clearly pointing to from consumers, has that changed the type of developments that you bring online? That, re that really hasn't. So the gestation period, once it's under construction, and about half of those 400 plus thousand rooms are under construction, depends on where in the world you are, but I'd say it's 24 to 30 months, um, sort of on average, you know, maybe 18 to 30 months, to, depending on where you are in the world, but things have gotten a little bit longer given all the supply chain issues. So 24 to 30 months before, uh, once it starts, before it's open and it's generating fees. What we have seen is, um, you know, certainly the extended stay business that, of which we are, you know, a huge participant with Homewood Suites and Home 2 Suites by Hilton have been um, the best performers throughout COVID. Um, and they continue to perform well. And so given more mobility, I think those sorts of products, you know, have been somewhat favored, but not to the exclusion of the others. All of our brands at this point, you know, all 18 are growing at, at a healthy pace or driving the highest levels of market share that we've ever seen. And the reality is the demand patterns, while they're not exactly what they were pre-COVID, and I do think there'll be a bit of a shift um, when we get fully to the other side and get stabilized, it's a lot more like it was uh, pre-COVID than you would think. And so people are going back to the, you know, back to their, you know, back to their normal sort of travel habits by and large. Again, a little bit more leisure, a little bit more leisure, sort of the blend of the business and the leisure sort of put together. A little bit more, you know, extended stay, so longer stay, which favors some of the extended stay brands we have a little bit more, but nothing, you know, nothing off the charts that, that suggests that um, any of the brands that we have in our family of brands today isn't really appealing to customers. Now, as we think about new brands, um, and we are, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but yeah, you know, we're definitely thinking about, you know, on the margin, some of the things that did shift during COVID, um, do they suggest to us that there may be opportunities in terms of serving a broader customer base? And I, you know, I do think, you know, watch over the next, you know, watch over the next six or 12 months. I think you may see some things from us that sort of uh, address that.
Chris, uh, real quick before I let you go, I, I went back to my notes from 2019 when you were at the All Market Summit. I didn't ask you this. I'm going to ask you now. What is the secret to longevity? You've been the CEO of Hilton for 15 years. How do you get that done? <laughs> Give us some secrets. Uh, I don't know. I, you know what? It's balance. Steady hand on the wheel. You know, have, have a great strategy. Build a great culture. Have a great team you can leverage off of. Make sure you have balance in life. And, you know, while this is, of course, really important to me that they're you know, fa friends and family and other th other interests that are important and, you know, keep everything in perspective. But the, but but in life and business, I think my longevity um, has a lot to do with just having an approach of having steady hands on the wheel, whether it's my business life, my personal life, have a plan, work the plan. Don't jerk the wheel around, just steady approach. Well, uh, you, my friend, are timeless. You still look 32. Hilton CEO, Chris Nassetta, thanks for joining us again. I have a few, few gray, a few more gray hairs than I did in 2019, but that, you know, goes with the territory. You said that, not me. Chris Nassetta, always good to see you. Thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> good to see you guys. Thank uh, you. Brad, over to you. The stock market is still open. Still open indeed. And in fact, it's about lunchtime or lunchtime is wrapping up at least. And you can kind of see that in some of the intraday activity here. We've taken at least a little bit of a tick higher here most recently over about the past 30 minutes here in this 1 p.m. hour. So taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you're seeing that up right now on the day intraday by about 2%. 592 points added on today's session. Let's check in on the NASDAQ composite as well. You're seeing that up by 3%, more than 3% at this point in time, catching a bid to the tune of about 343 points and the S&P 500. You're also seeing that in the green by about 2.7%. Want to dive into some of the sectors that we're tracking very quickly here. We'll take you on over to a heat map view and taking a look at some of the 11 S&P 500 sectors. Well, yeah, they're all in positive territory right now with this rip your face off type of rally, at least here today that we're seeing at this moment. We've got more broadly the S&P 500 up by about 2.7 percent, but outpacing some of the move higher. Yeah, you've got consumer discretionary. Keep a close eye on XLY as we move on throughout the rest of today's session. That's up 4 percent. Also want to take a look at tech here. You've got that up by about 2.9 percent. And here's why. Let's get on to another heat map. We heard you like maps, so we've got some more maps for your heat maps out there. The Apple stock, Apple shares, you're seeing that up by about 2.9% here on the day. Some other mega cap tech also ripping to the upside here. Amazon, that's up by about five and three quarters percent. Microsoft, MST, up three and a half percent. Google, Alphabet, Alpha Google, whatever you're calling them at home, call them up right now. They're up by about 4% there. You've got some lingering red here in the screen here, of course. Um, you've got applied materials that looks like it's in negative territory right now by about a quarter of a percent. But then even more so as we get into some of the Dow components as well. You're not going to find too many laggards there. In fact, none. All 30 Dow components are in positive territory right now, being led largely by some of those tech names. JP Morgan also up by about 4.9 percent. We've got more earnings that are coming forward over the course of this week. And so keep a close eye still on some of the banks that have yet to report. We'll get into the regionals as well. But even more so as we get some more of these Dow industrials that start to report, that's exactly where the markets could latch on to what they have to say about their future forecasts. We've got more right after the break. Coming up, believe it or not, the holidays are right around the corner. We'll take a look at what's ahead for the retail sector with Target CEO Brian Cornell. That's next. Right now, the worst place to be is stuck in between. Accelerate your investments or pull back. Change the plan or stay the course. That's why Northern Trust is here with specialized expertise, a history of success through every economic climate, and proven strategies rooted in data and analytics, giving you more control, clarity, and confidence. For now and whatever's next, Northern Trust Wealth Management.